Hello YouTube, how you doing? This is Anthony Gray. Bet you're wondering what the heck am I doing, right? I'm going to do a uh, simple little floral, but I want to add a border to it, okay? So, I got some uh, gel medium. This stuff. Okay. What I'm going to do is I take the palette knife, and I'm going to scrape it. Just like stucco or something right along this edge. Pull the tape off and continue it downward. And then I'm going to let it dry. Alright, it usually takes overnight to really let it set in and all of that. And I will use a splatter technique over all of it. And let it pretty much do what it does. Okay. Now, as I'm doing this, it's going to catch along the raised pattern area, and it will harden, and you can either usually paint straight over it, or, like I said, I'm going to use a splatter technique on this. Okay, now, since it's already raised, the plastic is raising it, so it will it will hold. It's not too ter terribly difficult to do. Like I say, this is the kind of painting that you would want to do um, like a day in advance or something like that. That's all. Just make sure it, it evenly goes over everything. It's not, like I say, it's not that difficult to say. Just, you know, scrape the excess off. If you see a gap in there, you know, just scrape it, scrape it all off. Now, when I peel this off, you can peel it right off and it'll hold its shape. And then I will just continue it um, further down. That's basically all you do. You just slowly peel the tape off. Okay, as you can see, it holds its shape. You just let it harden. Alright. Like I say, I'm going to continue it on downward. Might have a slight uneven gap, but you really won't notice it. Like I say, you just simply just tape it. As long as it stays still, all right? And you just do it all over again. Pretty neat to do. And just go over it again. Almost like icing on a cake. Don't really need too much. Actually, all you gotta do is just really cover the bits and be safe when you don't just wipe it off okay like I said the stuff this stuff does harden pretty quickly once the air gets to it and be mindful close up the jar if not you're going to get some uh, <laughs> very tough plaster there is finished. And it does dry because it, it will, even with that little bit of time, it dries on the uh, palette knife also. Okay. But in case you did get it on the palette knife, it does uh, warm water, comes right off. So there you go. Here's the pattern. Once that hardens, all right, it stays right on there. I can do the same thing on the other side if I choose to. And I'm, you know what? I just might. Why not? Why not? I'll put the floor palette pattern somewhere in here after I get done making the even bigger mess. Um, but you'll see. 
once I'm done with this. I didn't plan to go on the other side with it, but eh, why not? I'll just dip into some more of this stuff. And that's all you gotta do is just put it on there. Maybe not too difficult. Now I'm a lefty, so technically I should have went on the right side first. That's why you see me stop and look over there because I felt my hand rub up against it. Well, it up against something. I had to make sure I didn't smear it. You can also use this medium if you're doing bricks and you make you want to make a stucco type pattern. You can also use this. Okay, it's starting to harden up already from the previous use. It also depends on how warm your room is. I like to work it's where it's pretty warm out in the room. So get a little bit of that out of there. And I'll just continue. Right on. If you're not really a quote unquote neat person, you'll probably get this all over yourself and all over your hands and anything else close by. Well, you have to kind of bring out your inner kid working with stuff like this. All I'm doing is scraping off the excess because I'm looking at it to make sure it's all covered. And it is. And that's it. Okay, that's done. Because if it gets too too tacky, usually some warm a little bit of warm water, stir it up, and it'll activate again. Just remember just to put your top on it. Ouch, firmly. And I really wouldn't, once you get it on here, don't let this linger on. Just take it right off. Okay. It'll get some extra bits and pieces on wherever. Now, like I said, you can probably see it pretty good because of the way the light's bouncing off of the raised surface. Alright. And you can either, once it fully dries, you can just paint right over it and it makes the pattern. Or you can just drip stuff and spray. You'll see when I get it done. So, I'm going to let this tack up for a bit. I'm going to rinse this mess off. And uh, we'll continue on from there, alright? And I'll be back. Hey guys, what's going on? Alright, we're back. The pattern is dry. I used regular semi-gloss gel from Golden. Alright, it's number the gel medium. Pattern's dry. I took some glazing medium and I glazed the whole thing just to get the paint to flow on a little smooth. Okay. Now because it's pretty warm in my room, I'll just wet it a little more with water so the paint can go through. Okay, like I say, the pattern is dry. Okay. I'm going to make a very um, abstract type of background, but before I do that, I'm just going to put on a little yellow, maybe down here on the bottom, but I want to show you what it looks like when you go over the pattern. You see the yellow here? And I'm going to take some blue, and I'm going to start from here and mix it right into the blue or right into the yellow excuse me kind of fade it in a little bit gives kind of a green glow okay but you see what happens when the paint catches it okay 
something like that. I'm, I'm going to take some actual green, sap green, go from the top. See, the glazing medium helps it flow a lot easier. I'm going to fade that into the blue. Not really too concerned about which way the strokes are going. You're going to find that, that out in a, in a second. Okay. As you can see, now if I really wanted to, and I probably will, I'll smooth a lot of this over. I still want a little bright yellow down in here. I can take my blender brush. All right. Slowly work it all in there. On a circular motion, not, not too strong. Like I said, I just want a, a smoother blend. I like to go in a circular motion. Kind of ties it all together. When I do it, I really don't want to stay. You don't want really to really stay uh, in. <coughs> excuse me. You don't want to really stay in one spot. This is basically how I want to do it here. Try to clear up that circular area, that area in here, where some of the uh, there. Okay. Now, since I used the color. Depending on uh, the lighting situation, you might not see all of them, which is fine. But you will after I do what I'm going to do. Okay. That's basically that's basically it. That's the type of background I'm looking for. Now, I'm going to take, because this is acrylic. All right. still a little wet, but that's fine. What I'm going to do... Take some pure color. And I'll maybe splotch a little up here. Uh, maybe some down here in the corner like that. Pretty laid on pretty thick. Uh, maybe some more in here, like so. Take some of that yellow that I have. Put it right here at the top. Try not to blend the yellow too much. And I need to get some dark green in there somewhere. Probably maybe up around here. And eh, maybe put some around here. A little green and blue, something. Just want it a little darker there. Alright. I'm gonna take spray bottle full of water and watch this just just spray it and let it run like so just let it take its course now I have towels and stuff on the bottom of my uh, boards so I'm not really worried about that okay as you can see, some of the spray some of, is taking some of the color off, which is also fine. It's no problem there. And if I want, actually, I have a straw for that. A little regular straw. See that? You do it as many times as you want. Maybe come down here. Now let's say if you want maybe a brighter color or some uh, blue or whatever or mixture 
Intel was already running. You just plop it right up on there. Just like so. Uh, I need a little bit in here. I still want to gradually dark on, on the corners. Uh, maybe in here in the corner up here. Like that. A little darkness covering. Have it go whatever direction you want, really. Maybe you want it to go the other direction. Like so. And just let it continuously run down. And in case you're wondering, I'm still not done. <coughs> I'm kind of a neat nigga. I just want to clean up some of the splatter a little bit. I usually do some of my pencil and ink work on this board. But with acrylic and rubbing alcohol, all of this comes off anyway like it's never been used. So I don't worry about it. Some of those really crazy backgrounds or whatever. This is how I do it. All right, especially for a lot of my uh, florals. I learned that from uh, Gary and uh, Catherine. I might want to plop some down here in the, in the corner here. Maybe a little bit right here. Just in there like that. Now, since I've done it in this fashion, okay, do I really want it to drip there going downward? Not necessarily. I'll just do the easy route. Take the board. Tip it upside down. That simple. And I'll go from there. Just going in the other direction. <clears throat> I really don't want it to get on the uh, silver part there. So I'll just keep wiping it. It's no big deal. And if I want them to run, the other direction. Anywhere I want. Anywhere I want. Here we go. Just let nature take its course. Let gravity do what it does. And for those of you who like to play around with color like this, <laughs> You'd love it. Now the only thing, kind of a drawback, <clears throat> if your tape doesn't have too much uh, stickiness to it, the water will seep into the tape and you would have to darken your border. But I really don't mind that. I kind of like a dark black border anyway. So I really don't mind. All right. That's basically all I want to do really with that side. What I'm going to do is take it, clean this bottom off a little bit. And turn it right back, right side up. Like so. I'm still not done. <clears throat> now what I'm about to do actually work best. If I lay the uh, panel uh, straight down, 
but just for example purposes, I'll do it up here. Rubbing alcohol. Same, you get it at the bargain store for a dollar or whatever. Okay. And what I'm going to do is spray it while it's wet. See the effect? Do it again. You see what it's doing? And just let nature take its course. Let it let gravity do what it does. Just go downward with it. That's it. And just let it trail. It'll do its own interesting effects. Now, if I had this board uh, flat, it would just uh, splay outward like branches all right but you know I like it to see it do what it's doing right now it's fine and like I say if I wanted to I can take it and just flip it around and just do it the other way but now you can see the patterns okay and just let it do what it does now while it's doing this I will let it dry, and I'll come back, well, I have to let it totally dry, I'll come back and um, we'll start doing some flowers and some leaves and stuff like that, and show you how that's done, alright, and while this is drying, what I'm going to do is I'll lay it flat so it can stop, because it's going to keep traveling until it dries, but I don't want to lose all this yellow. So I will take this off the board and um, I'll come back and we'll start doing some uh, flower arrangements. Okay, we're back. I bet you're wondering what the heck did I just do? Well, like I said, it's all dry. All right, the pattern is dry. Um, I just I was going to leave the uh, the dried up pattern. All by itself but I think it would stand out more with some spray paint and I have some uh, Krylon uh, stone paint it also raises up okay and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna spray paint over the raised pattern the tape is the rest of the uh, raised pattern okay I just wanted to show you how I taped it up I got some um, multicolored two-ply board just to protect the rest of the painting. It doesn't take very long for this stuff to uh, adhere and you know, get on there. So, But it is a pain to take the cap off. Sometimes you would need a uh, screwdriver or something to take it off, but I got it off. You shake it up a bit. <clears throat> it would also be well to do this in a ventilated area. All right, I really don't do too many of these. And you just give it a little dab. Okay, about six, seven inches away. Just spray it a little bit. Just make sure it covers up pretty good. Just like that. That's about it. All right. Looks worse than what it is. And you can actually take everything off right now and position um, the stencils and position the tape on your next one. Just take it right off. There you go. Okay. And it's also raised up. Alright. And I'm going to just do the same thing with the next pattern. I also have tape on the side surface. So I can just tape it to the grooves. It doesn't go anywhere. It's pretty harmless. And I will do the exact same thing right here. Just measure it up uh, really good. Okay. Now, <clears throat> I think I'll put the tape right about here. Stick. I think I just wrecked that part of it. That's okay. 
glad it happens while the film's going. Not everything goes perfect. So I will put this tape right here just to hold it. Okay. The rest of it's not going anywhere. I will tape up the top part again. I use thicker tape. Basically, you just want it to stay put. Okay. I'll press it down. Just tape it. You really just want it to stay still. This type of uh, stone paint actually swells up as it exits the can and uh, how you get the effects you get. fingers in the groove. You just want the want it just to stay stay there. Now I don't want to damage none of this up here. Okay. So what I will do I will usually get another piece of paper just lightly put it over that. And lo and behold I have another large useless sheet of very bright paper. Um this is where you would get newsprint, something you really don't want to, you don't care about, okay? Now, you don't really want to scar up your previous pattern. And you really don't want to cover up what you're trying to spray paint either. This needs to go a little higher. where you don't scar that up okay as long as it's not touching it's not touching and just to make sure I'll just patch it right here no big oops no big deal there actually it only takes a second to do it just shake up the can distance away, just spray it. Just want to cover up the green. I'll remove the top part so Turn it upside down. The sticky part is facing. <laughs> still trying to still trying to uh, spray. Okay. Definitely keep this somewhere clear and out the way because the, uh, the tape is still, uh, the paint is wet on the uh, stencil. Throw that away. Throw that away. Remove this half. Remove the other half. Do it again on the other side. Just remember, you don't want it really pressing on to that part of the uh, the uh, paper. I know my back's to you. Sorry about that. Just lightly. I'm, I'm pressing over here on this side so I don't want it to really touch and destroy that other um, part that I just painted over and it won't because you see it's lifting up from over there so you're pretty fine all right now that that one's done we'll move on to the next Make sure you get as even as you can. <clears throat> All right. There, you just want it to stick. Now I use other tape to just secure it a little stronger. And 
just hope that the tape or the, the spray can works. Something like that. Let's use a bigger tape for the rest down on the bottom. As soon as I can find where I placed it. very thin edge of, uh, of the border. I really don't want to get under that pin on the border. But there you go, it's all set up, something like that. Now one can only hope that this can will work. We're about to find out right now. I guess it does. There you go. That was violent. But cool. Perfect, actually. Perfect. Okay. Now I'm going to move to the bottom edge. All of this, you don't worry about. It's not important. Don't panic. Now the paint. <coughs> you're going to want to that off as quickly as possible when you're done. Just need to protect that little spot right in there. Easily done, just like this. That's all you need to do. That protects all of it. All right. Take about a microsecond just to cover it up. I don't want to see any green. She wrote. You can save this paper, put it somewhere. But you know, the animals won't get to it. Just set it down somewhere. It dries in a few hours or less. It depends, like I say, how warm the room is. As you can see, none of the other side is disturbed. Got your pattern, sticks out. All right. I'll place this over here. I'll just keep the tape on there. Let it, let it stick on there. It doesn't really matter. This stuff is still wet. As you can see, and you can warm water. It's great for it off. Okay. So you don't really have to worry about, about um, it sticking and staying there. Just rinse it off with uh, warm water. Just rub it away. A little, little, it's got a, a sponge or something like that. And just scrub it away. That's it. It'd be good as new. No shades of anything. All right. So what we're going to do, because I really want to clean that off, because I intend to use it again. I'll, uh... Let that dry a little bit, and we get to the fun part, which is the floral, all right?
Be right back. All right, and we're back. Remember I told you all you have to do is wipe it off? That's it. This type of plastic is made for that stuff. All you have to do is take, you know, wipe it off. Good, good, good as gold, all right? I won't be needing this anymore, so I'll just set it to the side over here with the rest of the templates. We'll get to uh, mess around with these flowers. Now, this is only 9 by 12. I tend to paint with brushes con conducive to the size of uh, the canvas you're working on. Okay? So, the brushes that I will use will not be, from what I can see over here, will be the big ones for the bigger canvases. I got a series of shorter brushes. I'll be working with acrylic. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's see here. These brushes. I know I got a, uh, this is a half inch. I do have a half inch. All right. Flat. This is a three-quarter inch flat. All right, nothing really um, special about them, actually. Something you just get at the store, some cheesy store somewhere. If you're gonna do florals, I would recommend a uh, synthetic brush, something a little bouncy, got a little a little bounce to it. Okay, and I'm gonna um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm gonna put. Uh, some big petaled flower down here. Uh, a bud up here. And maybe some wisteria coming down there. Okay. So, what I'll first start out with is um, the grounding foundation of um, the major flower. I'm deciding on what flower I want to put. But let me show you my little mess of a palette. All right, titanium white, right there. Sap green, cad red, uh, what type of blue is that? Uh, phthalo blue, and that's my medium right here. All right, I'm not gonna put medium all over here. All right, I'm gonna put the medium in with my paint that I choose so it just goes smoother. Alright, I want it in a reverse S pattern, maybe this way. So I'm gonna have leaves going in that direction. Okay. Uh but the first thing I think I'll do is I'll block out maybe with a little a little white. I'll block out where I want the large flower, large petal flower. Uh maybe Maybe somewhere around here. Okay. And then I'll have the bud. Uh, I'll have to put the bud here. Yeah, that's fine. Might put the leaves going in this direction. Maybe one coming out that way. See how it goes. West Syria will be. I'll have the West Syria. And drape around here, go down, go over here, maybe around the top here, disappear over there. Something like that. Okay. With that said, and with those that you can see where I want to put everything, okay, I'm going to darken around this area in here to make the flowers pop out a little bit. I really don't want to destroy too much of the white in there. Don't want to destroy the yellow. Alright. So, I'll uh, dip into a little bit of my blue. A little bit of the red. Mix it in there pretty good. Uh, maybe a tad of green. Now, as I'm mixing this in, it, remember this is acrylic paint. I'm putting some medium in this paint. To help it flow and move around a little better on a dry canvas. Even the canvas paper. Got a lot of tooth and it likes to grip stuff, you know what I'm saying? So, we're gonna go, oh, maybe around here, just a, around in here somewhere, something like that. Okay. 
play around with it here. Maybe a little bit here. Not too much. Definitely, maybe, I might put a leaf here. Let's do a pattern of it right there. Maybe there. Because I really don't want to destroy all that yellow. I'll probably put the leaves somewhere around here. Maybe one around here. Something like that. Okay. I'm going to take that. I'm going to dip it a little bit more medium. Take this same dark color. Okay. And I'm going to just, with the chisel edge of the brush, go up, spread it. Narrow the brush, just like that. I'll do it again. Take a brush, narrow, spread, and maybe like that. Okay, remember the west area most likely be going over these leaves, so it really don't matter. Okay, got the buds going to be going in the back of that leaf. I'm going to do the same thing in here. Tip the brush, spread, go down. Okay. Yeah, you know what? Maybe a tiny little something. Nah, because I'm going to have the stem go toward this way. That bud come through. And the west area will be here. So, you know what? Fine. That's yeah, fine. No problem. My west area, I want a little on the blue side, maybe violet. It should be the foundation for the west area. A little more medium. Now for west area, I'm going to use mainly a, 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 a smaller brush, but I'm just concentrating on the outside edge. So I'm just patting away, patting away, something like that. Pat away. Just like that. Let's make it disappear up in there. Okay. That's it. I have to stand back, make sure that it's angled correctly. Something like that. I said I wanted to leave here, I wanted to leave here. So I'm going to put them there right this minute. I like the way the Jenkins do, do their leaves, I think it's awesome. Uh, I guess I'll show you a little bit. They would start out, if you're new to it, you start off with a triangle, like so. I already got the part darkened in. Darken it in, and it'd be narrow right there. I'm going to get some more medium. And you're going to go in the direction, like so. That direction you're going, you aim all toward there. Okay, another one there, another one there. Do the same thing on this side. Another one there, one there, one there, and the tip. That's leaf number one. We'll get the highlights a little bit later. Do the same thing on this side. I already I'll do the triangle part. Okay, and we're just gonna go stroke down, stroke down. Same thing here. And then you got the uh, vein in the middle there. So it's pretty much like that. I've got one more to do down below here. The little triangle that way, triangle that way. Even if it goes off the page, it don't matter. That Leaf one, leaf two, leaf three. I'm gonna have the highlights go probably from the upper right side here. The highlights will be on on that side. Um, not too difficult really to do the do the highlights. I'll just lighten it up with. I would rather do the highlights in a yellow. So I got a little bit of yellow, a little bit of white, a little bit of green, all on the same brush. Okay, a little medium. The highlights you don't have to 
go as far is still the press, push, and lift. Okay? Press, push, lift. Press, push, lift. Press, push, lift. Okay. Do the same thing on, on this side here. Press, push, lift. Press, push, lift. Press, push, lift. Alright. Remember that buzz is going to come up and over that. Alright. Got one more over here. Just flattening out the brush. Give it a nice little chisel. Okay. And press, push, lift. Press, push, lift. Press, push, lift. Just like that. Darker part. I wanted to, uh, I want the darker part just to shine just, just a little bit. Just to let you know, you know, it's, it's there. So I'll, I'll put a tad tiny bit of white with the blue. Pat, uh, push lift, push lift, push lift, push lift. Put the vein going there. Same thing on this side, push lift, push lift, push lift. Don't necessarily have to meet. Okay, you got the little variations in the in the color there, in the leaf. And just one more on this side. Push lift, push lift, push lift. Okay. I'm going to get back into the yellow, into my lighter green, because I want to put the little vein on that side, vein on this side, vein over here. Just like so. Okay. I want to move to a smaller brush. Let me rinse this one out. I'll probably use this brush that I'm rinsing out. I'll use it for the uh, flowers. Well, maybe this flower here, the larger one. All right. So I'll move on to a slightly slimmer brush. I know I just had it in my hand. There we are. All right. I'm going to go to a half inch brush. I'm going to mess around with the west area here. The west area I wanted uh, blue. Okay. And what I'm going to do is just a slight touch of white with the blue. I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to uh, blend it. Now, for West Area, if you can get uh, a group of petals like this, press, press, okay, there's that one. I don't know if it's too dark for you to see it. I'll do one of these numbers. I'll just zoom in on you for you. And I'll aim it upward because we're concentrating on that anyway. So let's deal with that. Okay. You should see the four here. Okay. Now I'm going to let it. You got the four petals here. Alright. And you just build off those petals. In all types of directions. Alright. Make your petals a little more pronounced on the edges. I'm going to highlight all of this later on anyway. But long, and I'm not, as you can see, I'm not really worried about getting more paint and doing it now. Okay. You know what? I want it to come in front. Just like that. I'm getting a little more blue. Another little tap of white. As I'll do the main highlighting a little later. But that's all I'm doing is Really tapping and keeping that leaf shape. I want to go in front of those leaves. And just keep keep going at it. Different directions. Maybe something coming down here like this, like so. Now I might want it a little darker since it's in that light green area. So we just I still want it a little dark in here. So I'm going to just use pure. There we go. Just like that. Okay. Now, I'm going to highlight it with 
the white mixing in with the dark blue, but I'm not going to totally, because the light source is coming from the upper right. So we're going to get a little highlight here, especially on this end. So we're going to highlight that end. Just dipping into some paint real quick. Like this is more of an example than anything else. Maybe some highlight. Let it tease a little bit in here. Not too much. Dipping them in some more white. Not totally uh, concerned about. There we go. Maybe a little here. And some on the outside edge here. Now on the outside edge it's going to be a little more white than the blue. Because you really want it to kind of stick out there. And a couple pieces here. trying to get a little light there something like that all right now I'll zoom back out we can get to maybe some uh zoom that out here sorry about that guys zoom out a little bit more bring the camera up just a tad like so okay Let's see where I'm at here all right now, still got a little bit of blue, a little bit of white on my brush. Uh, maybe, just maybe, I might want to put, oh, I'll do it on this side. I need something coming down over here anyway. A little, little thin line here. Okay. A little bit of medium into the white blue mixture. Not really blending it much. I'm going to take this glob of paint, put it here, press, wiggle, up, out. Okay. Now, if you get a little bit on your, on your uh, little um, patterns here, that's okay. Matter of fact, I'm going to right it right, right across it like that. It's okay. Uh, these will probably be hidden by the petals here, so that's all right. I'm gonna get a little dark blue here, thin it out, and give it a little more of a vein there. All right. On this side, I'm gonna show you. I think I'll still use this brush. I believe I can probably get away with it with this brush. We're about to find out. I'm going to make a thin um, rosebud that dips around. Come here, press, release. It should be a bud and a stem at the same time. Okay. So what I'm going to do is take a whole bunch of red. Go almost up to the furrow with red. Like so. Now on the tip of my brush will be some green. Watch this. Kind of have a uh, kind of a light light touch with this. Okay. I'll start from here. My green. Go 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 go, and then press down. Bud number one. Okay, I'll do it again. I'll go up. Up, 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 up. Press. Bud number two. Okay. Yeah, you see a little more green because you don't usually do it with a uh, flat brush. But it's alright. All can be corrected. Uh, you know what? I still might want another one lingering around. So let's put one eh, let's put it going right on across. Nice long one. From here, from here, from here, from here, from here. Right in there. Just like that. Okay. So there you go. 
I will put the the calyx are obviously closed on these little guys. I rinse it off. Try to brush just a little bit. Get a little green. Mix it with a maybe a little bit of yellow in here, half and half. Now I'm stroking it across to get like kind of a blend. More green, a little bit of yellow. So it's like a, a half and half blend. And I'll just add the calyx. Right on across the little monuments there. Put a little um put a little uh medium on it. And I'll have one go around across here. Just like that. And I'll do it again on the other side. Still got medium on the brush. Just getting a little more yellow. And I'll do it right here. Like so. A little more yellow. And go right on across and down. Like that. I'll do one more. Right here. Goes right on across. Do the same thing on the other side. And go right on across. Might want a little more yellow on that one. So you can, it can be seen like so. Okay. Now that I've done that, I look maybe a little more yellow on this one. Just want it to be seen a little bit more. Let me rinse it off. Now if the yellow doesn't show, it's, to me it's not showing as strong as I want it to show. Therefore, add a little white to the yellow. It'll show now. Like so. Yeah, like so. Okay. Let's see. I want the green, I really don't want that stem to be that red, so I'll just go back over it with a little brighter green like that. I'll wipe the brush off, get some of that red out of there, a little more medium, a little more green, uh, add some yellow to that green. So, a little, a little white added in there. Doesn't take too much. Okay. So, got your leaves. A little long leaves here. All right. I still got this guy here to do. I'm gonna put him in right now. Just rinse off the brush really good. Dry it. I'm gonna block him in with pure red. Cat red. I want to hit him right about in here, like so. Looks like that. All right. I'm going to use some yellow to highlight that red. Won't use white because if you do. You're going to have pink. You're better off with a little more on the orange side, if anything. And I'm going to just do a couple strokes. Push. Away. Push. Away. Push. Away. I want that a tad brighter than that. A little more yellow. Just to brighten it up just a little bit. Push, push, and push, like that, okay, that's all I want for that one, more than likely, I got that red, these guys are red, might will put red in there, right, so, here we go, I just put red in there, I'm gonna just blend it, chop it up a little bit, I don't want it to be, see, just let the petals, Go that way. Yeah, a little bit of blue in it. 
don't cry. You'll be all right. Okay. I'm going to take some green, which is the opposite of the red. Mix it in with the red. More, more green. You need kind of a dark color, some medium in there. Okay. Put the center right about there. I want it a little darker than that. Got a tad of blue. Do it again. Right in there. You gotta take it, spread it outward, 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 outward. Just like so. Okay? Just like that. You got the side of the rolls with the bottom of the bowl. And I'll put it right there. And you're gonna go out. Outward. Just like that. Okay. Top of your leaf, the ones that are foreshortened to be here on the top. That's your bowl there. Okay. Now I'm gonna let that do get that sit a little a little bit. It's got medium in it, so it's not going to totally dry, believe me. I want to get to that stem. So, a little bit of green, a little bit of red, uh, just a touch of white to lighten it up a little bit. Give it kind of a reddish brown. Just make a, make a stem for this guy. Right in there. And give him a touch of yellow in there. Just a, just a touch. Now I'm gonna add some green. I'm not taking. I'm not rinsing off the yellow at all. Put the calyx in there. Get some medium. Let it flow a little bit. And we'll go to the edge. Go around. Go right up. Get a little more green. A little red with that green, I'll darken it up a tad. Some more medium. And we'll do it again. Spread out and go right out over it. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Just like so. Got one more. I'm going to brighten up that middle part though. Actually, let's brighten up this one side. I want more of a greenish look, so I'll mix my blue and my yellow. And, well, let's put some dangling down here. I want that brighter. So I can get a little separation there. Like so. And then run right up the middle. I still want that other one to pop a little bit too, so I'll give it a little more yellow. It's on the outside edge here. And the inside edge here. A little bit here. A little more there. Okay. It's like that. Okay. Let's work on these guys here. Um, well, you know what? Well, I got some of this yellow, some of this green. Maybe I'll step up some of those leaves a notch. You know, I'm using a, just a notch. Just like that. Maybe a little bit in here. Like that. A little touch in there. Okay. A little more medium. I want it to flow just a little better. Nice little vein here, little vein here, vein up there. Touch you up a little bit too. Just like so. Helps it to stand out a bit, alright? Let's deal with these guys in here. Something you definitely have to get used to is flower petal placement. 
I had a devil of a time with it. Still don't have it totally the way I would like it. But um, it's passable, I guess. Just got to keep working at it, keep practicing. I got a half inch brush this time. Okay. So let us go upward. Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. Go upward a little more. Right about there. All right. Basically, you can have a red flower here. Red rose, red poppy, red whatever. It's red. Got petals on it. All right. Take some red. Some medium. Plenty of medium. You definitely want the uh, petals to flow a little bit. But add just a touch of yellow to it. Okay. What you want to do, especially if you're new like me, you tend to sketch out a little bit. One there. One here. One here. Okay. A little more yellow. Red is a very strong color. And you want to aim right there. That's where you want to aim your strokes. Go a little bit past the uh, your foundation color. Alright. You take it. Push down, stroke, let it go. Do not go side by side. See that hard edge? You're going to go to the half of that flower. Like that. Okay. A little more medium. Alright, that's one down. Let's go on the other side. Push. Like that. More medium. Push. Toward that way. Let's go toward the middle. Okay, more yellow. Am I red? I didn't even add more red. It's just more more yellow. Okay. I want that petal to come like that. Let's go on the other side like that, and then the middle like so. I got a nice little grouping of petals right in there. Remember that's your horizon line for your petals. Your little vanishing point. Okay. We're going to do it again. Oh, right about here. Right about in there. Right about in there. Get another batch going. Like that. Like that. Go on the side. Like that. Like that. Another one in there. Like that. Alright. I think I'm going to have a little more yellow. Get a couple more in there. Like that. Like that. Go on the side. And maybe a little highlight. I'm pushing. Okay. Push. Release. I'll do the same thing over here. Push out. Go back in. Push out. Push out. You can still see a little bit of background in the petals. Give it a cool little effect. Even some of the leaves out here. Okay. I'm going to add a little white to the yellow. Actually, let's do this one here. That's the bowl here. Okay, I'll just thick the thin on here, thick the thin, thick the thin, right around in that area. Uh, let's add, push out, go back in, push out, go back in, something like that. We're gonna work on these outside ones a little, a little later on. A couple seconds actually. Dip into a little more red. Okay. I should have added some more yellow. But let's just deal with the red right now. I want to maybe add a petal. A petal. Well, let's do this. Let's go here. Here. Get some of those out of there. And on this side, go in. A little more of a deeper red now. I want a petal to go 
this way. And go down and up. I'm going to block that in like that. Now, since the light is coming from over there, I definitely going to need a little more yellow, just a tad more. I'm going to add a little white to that yellow, make it stand out a little bit. Just a little. There we go. Something like that. And this time the vanishing point is down there. Take it. It's going on the other side. Doing it this fashion, it just works for me. Going on the other, uh, going on the other side. Alright, I'll just lighten it up a little bit. Like so. Now, I'm going to rinse off this, rub, rub this, rest of the paint off this brush because I want to highlight that edge. That's where the light is anyway. Okay. I'll take pure yellow, some white, white's opaque, especially titanium white. Don't need too much of it. I just want to highlight tips of the pedal. Press a little strong, press a little strong. I'm going to turn my brush over, press a little strong. Need a little more. Actually, I should have put medium in it. I didn't. It was dry on that one. There we go. Press, 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 and press. Like that. Uh, let's put maybe a couple of needles like that. Little highlights here and there. Oh, uh, you know what? And something in there. That. I need some highlights inside those pedals too. Right along here. In here. Okay. It's almost, almost, almost about it. Really. Okay. Got the leaves here. You got three or more leaves here. You got your. Oh, let's add that too. While I'm in here. Blue and a couple of little, little roll leaves in here. Okay, maybe around right here behind above that calyx, like that. And you pretty much have it. Alright, I'm gonna get another brush to stipple on some, uh, some of the little uh, flowers in the center. Nothing special. Matter of fact, I could just use the corner of this. I'm gonna use a little bit of the, a little bit of the white, a little bit of the yellow, something piercing, just to make it stand out a little bit. Right, dead in the center, right in here. Just a, put a little bit of contention right in there. That's not too bad, I guess, right? Hope not. I'll find out when I post it, right? And just zoom out. Zoom out a little more. Uh, all right. And there you go. Nice little. I really didn't plan on, on uh, really teaching this because I, I don't feel like I'm nowhere near ready yet. Uh, but I did. I hope I explained the the strokes. Okay how to do it the flat brush or the silver with them. The more you do, the more you will get comfortable at doing them. Um, like I said, I still got a while to go yet myself. Okay. Okay, this painting's almost uh, about 90% done. I know that when I take off this tape, I'm going to have to darken. As you can see, you put the rubbing of the hull on. It bleeds through the canvas, but I usually would just use black uh, gesso and just tape it right up. All right, it looks a lot neater once it's all cleaned up and all that jazz. But anyway, floral. Uh, hopefully, I explain you how to do it. Um, remember.
golden, uh, either gloss, semi-gloss, doesn't matter. You're going to paint over it anyway. All right. It hardens. This stuff hardens pretty quickly, actually. Um, relatively quickly. Um, the, 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 uh, the rock foam spray paint I use for it. You can use any color, any metallic color, anything to, to stick to it. Um, let it, let it dry. And uh, you're good to go after that. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Hope it didn't go too long for you. And uh, I'm sure you let me know. I think this one ran quite quite a bit of time, even if I do chop it up. And uh, well, just let me know. All right. And I'll see you next time.